We've just gotten back from a six week trip to northern Manitoba. Our garden is uh, run over with weeds, but some of these weeds are some of my favorite plants. This stuff is called Creeping Charlie. Seems to be very similar to the bindweed that I really like, uh, but it doesn't spin itself around and around. So it doesn't have that kind of type of characteristic to it. Uh, but I went out and just basically pulled up a whole bunch of this and I'm going to use it today to to do some printing with. So I'm going to start, um, this plate hasn't been used for quite a while, so I'm going to start with just a few little simple roll-ups and just see how it uh, how it develops. It may need a couple of prints just to kind of get it going. That's the carbon black. And I'm just going to put in a bit of anthraquinone blue uh, with it, which is kind of just mellows it out a little bit. I'm going to be using most of the surface of the plate. Um, my tissue isn't quite large enough to cover the whole surface, but you know, it'll all work out in the long run. Don't sweat the small stuff. After all, I'm not working here on prints that would be an end product in themselves. I'm just working on them as design elements for my uh, future collage stuff. So I kind of know what I'd like, and I'd like to print some more of that. Um, so we'll see how it works out. see how that goes. So I'm printing today on the uh, Spectra uh, art tissue. I find that the first time you print after you've rolled it up, uh, some of the paint actually kind of seeps through to the back. Uh, it doesn't affect the tissue at all, but it does get all over your hands. So um, I kind of use a piece of paper just to get most of the pressing done without having to worry about that. And I just use my thumb to push in the stems a little bit, make sure I get a clean outline of the leaves and the little buds. I like all the little indents between the plants and and the variety that gives. So it's worth getting your fingers a little bit gooey. Okay. So this is a dark negative. Uh, full on, uh, as much paint is going to come off the plate is going to come off right now. Uh, these make quite interesting design elements because of their strong contrast. Now I do want a fairly clean positive print. 
Uh, so I'm going to take a, ne a second negative print with the plants in place. And that will take up a lot of the extra background ink. Shouldn't really call it ink because it's just acrylic paint, but I kind of think of it as ink. And less of it bleeds through, so I can quite freely push with my fingers this time, not get too messy. Although it's all just washable soap and water cleanup. Some colors lift quite easily. Other ones sort of stay on the plate longer. Uh, this black is, is a pretty good color to lift. Oh, and you can see some of that nice anthraconome blue bleeding through there as well. Now this second negative has less contrast than the first one, but that's also very useful. If I wanted to take a chunk out of this and collage it in, uh, it's not such a big impact. And looking at the amount of ink I got off of there, I'm going to take a third negative. Otherwise, my background plate is going to not be as clean as I want for this particular positive. This one has just a smattering of detail, but I really do like that. It's delicate and uh, could provide me with some linear elements for a collage. So now I'm going to lift the vegetation, hopefully without making a mess, and pull what I hope will be a very dark negative or dark positive. When I was in northern Manitoba, I had a lot of chance to just think about what I liked about my recent work, um, what did I like best about it, and one of the things that I really did like was these strong, dark plant shapes, especially in focal points. So this is going to be a pretty valuable piece of tissue for me. But having said that, this uh, second positive print, often referred to as the ghost print, I find that this gives you material that you can use in backgrounds. So if you want to imply that there's more vegetation behind the, the, the big dark stuff, then sometimes this works just great to give you that. It's still quite readable. It still looks like the plant, but it could be behind. It's a bit of dioxazine purple. A little bit of ultramarine blue. Been printing with that while I've been away. And some transparent red iron oxide down the middle.
You can see as I'm working with my fingers here that the lines become thinner, and occasionally something that wasn't visible before, like that little section, will become more intricate because I can press the paper down into the little negative spaces. So depending on what you're looking for, that can be a helpful thing to do. But you know, it's also individual. It really just depends on what you're looking for, how it appeals to you. The whole choice of plants is so individual. And of course, it depends on what you've got in your backyard or somewhere you can go close by. Now, I didn't roll the paint anywhere near as thickly on this one. And I just used some muted tones, purples, blues, and that transparent red iron oxide. But that's a very pretty pattern. I've taken some of these uh, dark negatives, the first negative, um, scanned them into the computer, and then made stencils out of them. Perhaps I'll demonstrate that in a future video. So this is the second negative. It's going to take up a lot more of that paint, but there's not going to be anywhere near as much contrast as the first negative. And again, I'm, I'm pressing in. I really want quite a, a clean, positive print. When I pull the plants off, I want there to be a fairly good definition. And that's just based on what I've been doing lately with the collages. So, yeah, I'm just pressing in a little bit. When that purple does take a while to get off the plate. So there's going to be one more negative print coming here. Yeah, quite a nice color pattern there, really. So there's more, probably more purple left on this plate than the other two colors, but I will just give it a good overall rub, get as much of that up as I can. Again, some very interesting little vague linear shapes. When there's quite a bit of paint on the plate, uh, the paper comes off really quite easily. But as the paint gets a little thinner, and especially on this plate that hasn't been used for a while, uh, it gets a little bit harder to pull it off without tearing it. You just have to be careful. Oh yeah, I'm very happy with that one. Oh.
there we go. Quite a bit fainter. But look at all that interesting detail that's coming up from the leaves. Sometimes you don't see that a lot of that in the first positive prints. So this roll up is uh, carbon black with dioxazine purple. I have so much of this in the garden and I know my husband's going to clean that out at any time. So I am actually using fresh plant matter for each roll up and that's not something I normally do. Normally I manage to get several prints out of a particular piece of plant. You can really see how the detail starts to come out when I give it the old finger rub. Right down in through here. That just that thumb just manages to bring out all those little spaces between the leaves and the stem. Whoops. Sometimes when you're putting the tissue on the plate and pulling stuff up, you get little inconsistencies wrinkles and things and some of those are just beautiful and this is where you get to see them on the second second print I think some pigments do this more than others as well. And this combination of dioxazine purple and the carbon black seems to give me more of that kind of background texture uh, than some of the other color combinations.
And there we go. A beautiful second positive. So I've had some questions in the comments about cleanup. Um, cleanup is radically different if you're using golden open paints. If you're using golden open paints, all I do is I just take a squirt bottle, give it a bath, it's still wet enough along these edges to dissolve the paint. It doesn't stick. And the brayer, all I do is I just take it to the sink and I wash it off under uh, warm water. If things get really gooey, uh, particularly with plant debris, which is just, you know, when you're doing botanical prints, plant debris is just part of life. And um, if I get a lot of that, then I'll actually take the plate to the sink and uh, give it a good rinse with some soap and water. And it's a little awkward. This thing is quite heavy. Uh, it kind of flops around a lot, but you know, it's worth doing every, every once in a while or if you end up with a lot of junk on your plate. But it's not the paint that I'd have to do that for. The paint I can just get off with water and a paper towel. My smaller plate, I would take to the sink because it's quicker than, than doing this. But the big plate, I only move it with a, when I absolutely have to. See, I'm still taking off a little bit of color there, so. This is a Jelly Arts plate. I don't know how the care for um, homemade plates would be. That might be different. But this one cleans up just this as easily. It's almost one of the best reasons for using that golden open paint. <laughs> 